The holiday season is upon us, and holiday-themed cinema is aplenty. From your favorite Christmas classics to modern twists on old tales and so on, why would we at Studio 24 pass up the opportunity to review a holiday film, and what else besides Dwayne Johnson's new venture, Red One? Ho ho howdy, and welcome to Studio Cinema Saturday, the show where we review films old and new, the ones you don't like, and the ones that you do. I'm your host, Jackson Ham, and today we're talking about Red One. This film is directed by Jake Kasdan. It stars Dwayne Johnson as Callum Drift, Chris Evans as Jack O'Malley, Lucy Liu as Zoe, and J.K. Simmons as Saint Nick Santa Claus himself. Starting off with some non-spoiler thoughts, if you like the idea of a Christmas-themed adventure film with some generic but otherwise subversive twists, you're gonna like this. It has all the hallmarks of a Dwayne Johnson-led picture, and if you're into the modern tropes of Johnson, you're in for another treat. Spoilers abound from here on out because, let's be honest, this is a holiday film and they all have a happy ending. First off, this film is just over two hours and I don't see why it had to be that long. I think a 90 minute runtime would have been great for some generic action characters for a family film. It would have been just fine. I mean, horror these days are mostly an hour and 30 minutes to an hour and 45 minutes and they do just fine with that time allotted. And I think this movie didn't need two hours and three minutes to tell the tale it did. When it comes to screen time, this film gets into the third act because it feels like it needs to. I remember watching the film thinking, you know, we should be wrapping this up by now, and apparently the characters were thinking the same thing, because immediately when I started thinking that, we were launched directly into the third act, and here we go to the end of the movie. Now, there's all kinds of memorable characters from holiday movies, and if you're coming to Red One to see a memorable character, you're not really gonna get it. Maybe J.K. Simmons' Santa Claus is memorable because it's a cool new take on him, and, you know, everybody loves J.K. Simmons. But everybody's very, you know, standard base-level character. Dwayne Johnson plays a version of Dwayne Johnson action movie character number 1000. Chris Evans is maybe the most charismatic character playing, like, a roguish villain-esque character that's on the path to redemption. You know, he's mainly just... A misled type of person but other than that we're not really getting much here talking about jk simmons as santa and some of the concepts used for him santa in this movie is a figure akin to the united states president it's really interesting to see i could say and it also seems santa is an intergovernmental military asset per se in the beginning of this movie Santa is taking off in his sleigh after being at a mall to greet some kids, you know, classic Santa activities. And uh, when he's taking off, he's being escorted by F-22 fighter jets. And I believe Lucy Liu's character also mentions Santa works with multiple governments to deliver gifts on Christmas Eve. It's um, a new take on Santa, that's for sure. Conceptually, I'll say this film really tried to make an interesting take on Santa and it does try to seemingly create an extended universe for Red One with Lucy Liu playing this Nick Fury-esque character who is the leader of a watchdog group for mythical characters. Of course, in the trailers, we know we get to see Krampus, but other cameos such as the Headless Horseman make an appearance. So who knows? Maybe we get future Red One sequel-esque movies. Speaking of Krampus, this is where I felt someone in the making of this movie was watching the internet or their kids were on like YouTube or something and they really saw that they were into like those slapping tournaments and power slap and all that. So they're like, what? how can we get this in the movie? That just, the whole Krampus slap thing felt like it was some producer mandate like oh the kids love this or someone was like kids will love this part of the movie so we need to put it in there i don't know maybe it's an integral part of the krampus lore if i am wrong please correct me in the comments below i need to know is krampus Schlop integral to the krampus lore so the film it eventually ends and everything is it's all right for the characters Dwayne Johnson's hope is restored. Chris Evans is a better man. He's now connected with his son that was estranged. Santa is saved. And you may be wondering, 
Why haven't I mentioned Lucy Liu that much? She's this Nick Fury-esque character overhead of a mythical character watchdog group. Well, you know, Lucy Liu, she's a wonderfully talented actress from such projects as Kill Bill, Charlie's Angels, and Kung Fu Panda, and she's just kind of in this movie. This film got me thinking about the power of a star like Dwayne Johnson has when it comes to getting a film made. I mean, most films he's attached to, he's a leading force in production and creative direction as well. Take Black Adam, for example. He felt like a one-man army with how he was acting in it, and if, you know, behind-the-scenes stories are to be believed, he was really shaping the direction of Black Adam and some of DC movies at that point in time. And listen, I like Dwayne Johnson. He's a charismatic guy. He has undeniable star power. But after a recent interview where he's talking about the power of IMAX after he watched a great film like Oppenheimer, he said he watched it in the exact same spot in an IMAX theater where Christopher Nolan likes to. And he said after he saw it, he thought that if Red One was in IMAX, it could be game over. Not really. Um, I think that's... A little crazy to say that Red One is game over for cinema. It's uh, kind of just another rock trope film. Now, I like him, and maybe we can get more of an auteur rock in the future, you know, such as in the upcoming Benny Safdie biopic, The Smashing Machine. We've seen photos of the rock in that. Maybe we're going to get maybe a more return to a younger rock who's a hungry actor looking to break into it after his wrestling career. Hopefully, we can get that. Rating this film, I gotta give it 4 out of 10. Uh, there's much better Christmas action-adventure films, both like live-action and animated for that point. I feel that this film will end up being a kind of random movie that you may see this holiday season. Kind of like you're at the family gathering and the kids are running around, so to get them all sitting in one place and quiet, they just throw on Red One. Now, if that'll work to get them to sit in one place and be quiet, you know, yet to be seen. Keep me posted on that, folks. That sums up my thoughts on Red One, and that brings this episode of Studio Cinema Saturday to a close. We have all kinds of other episodes of Studio Cinema Saturday, such as Venom the Last Dance or Gladiator 2. There's also our sister show, Television Tuesday, where we talk TV and tell you all about it, where we're talking about such shows as Batman, Cape Crusader, or The Penguin. You can also go check out our short films here on Studio 24, because get this, we're filmmakers. Go figure. Well, what are you waiting for? Go check out our other videos, and thanks for watching. <laughs>